Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining the Tug.io 2024 webinar series. Series, we got a good one for you today. Um, I'm here with Mariota, great company. Today, we're going to talk about effective deployment of remote solutions. Uh, that can cover anywhere from agriculture, water, environmental monitoring. Just think of remote locations, right, and how the importance of satellite connectivity is, right? It's really important and it's used heavily across many, many sectors. I'm here with Mike DeMarco, the sales director in North America. Thank you for joining me, Mike. Thanks for having me, David. Yeah, absolutely. We have a good webinar today. First off, before we get started, um, I'd like to know where everybody's from. Um, if you could put in chat where you're from. Mike is from Arizona. I see him at shows all the time. We collaborate all the time. I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina, so please take a few minutes. I'll pause here just for a second uh, to write where you're from, because um, we Tago's and Mariota is really global, right? <clears throat> so I work with customers all over the all over the world. So thank you, William, Florida, just south of me here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Nice, Atlanta. Yeah, just got back from Atlanta. Uh, Colorado, very good. Brazil, we have a huge presence in Brazil. Um, so glad to have you all on the webinar. Uh, Larry Davis, how you doing? I know Larry, very nice guy. He's in the Baltimore area. We got Argentina here, Italy. Wow, the global presence for the webinar. That is just awesome. Germany, I love it. Canada, Ooh, we got a wide range today, Mike. That's really good. Sure do. Brazil, awesome. So today, um, when we uh, go through the webinar, there's a couple things to discuss here, right? So of course we have the agenda, right? So IoT, satellite technology and solutions. And really it goes across many sectors, as I said, right? Uh, Mariota FlexSense and Tago IO, um, the ecosystem and key features um, of Tago IO. And then we have a really nice live demo. Um, now we do have a Q&A at the end, but you guys can post your questions at any time in the chat and we'll get to them as we, uh, as we can, or we'll try to address them at the end of the webinar. So ask away your questions. Mike's available. I'm available. So let's get started. We're going to have a really good webinar, uh, webinar today. I've been looking forward to this webinar for months. So I'm glad the day is here. Um, Tago IO and Mariota partnership is strong and very well, right? So really, when you think about satellite, it's very cost effective, as well as Tago IO, right? Because one reason why, and we're unique in this way, is we do not charge per device, right? We charge by transactions. Right. So that makes it really low cost and effective. And of course, satellite is very cost effective as well. Um, the integration between our platforms, and we're going to show you this in real time as part of the live demo, is really nice. Hey, Antonio from Portugal. Thank you for joining. And we really recognize the leadership as well as Mariota recognizes the leadership in IoT platforms and IoT satellite connectivity. Right. So, of course, we want to work with the best. And Mariota fits that to the T. So they are the best in what they do. And uh, we are very glad to have partners with them. I've worked on several several projects with Mike's team. Um, very, uh, the synergy there between the two companies is just seamless, right? It's just great. So, and if you think about um, strong market and use cases, you know, yeah, there's agriculture, but think of satellite and remote areas as what most people use it for. And I have many customers that are using Mariota in remote locations, whether that's for tracking farm animals, um, agriculture in general, water resources, um, oil and gas. I have some customers in Texas that use satellite, Mariota satellite, <clears throat> environmental monitoring. And there's so much more when you think about what you can do with Tago IO and Mariota in these, all these different verticals, but it's certainly not limited to the ones that are on your screen, on my screen now. Um, it goes well beyond that. And right now I'm going to pass it over to Mike so he can uh, talk a little bit about Mariota. Yeah, no, I appreciate everyone joining and 
Happy, happy Columbus Day to those of you here in the States. I'm um, not a huge fan of this whole death by PowerPoint, but this is a webinar, so uh, it is what it is. But I'll do my best to breeze through the slides for you guys. Uh, so as you can see on this slide, only 10% of the Earth's surface can be monitored effectively with existing communication technologies. I know in the U.S. it's dramatically higher, but from a global perspective, I'm sure you can appreciate the importance of reliable, low-cost satellite connectivity. I'm a huge believer that if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. So having the ability to have connectivity to all of your IoT devices anywhere and everywhere solves for that by allowing you to easily and affordably measure, track, and manage your devices in, a remote, in remote locations. Uh, our most common UK use cases we get here at Mariota are agriculture, uh, transportation and logistics, oil and gas, water, utilities, and defense. How does it work? Mariota enabled devices wake up intelligently and connect with passing Mariota satellites securely and with almost no energy cost. The Mariota network then routes data directly to your customers for analysis and action. Customers can also send data to devices in the field. Our low power, ultra low cost global satellite network eliminates location and price barriers to the deployment of connected devices. The, Mari the Mariota network has over 30 LEO satellites in its network, a combination of company owned and exclusive leases with our various satellite partners like Spire. I mentioned de defense earlier as one of our main use cases and is a really, one big, a really big one for us. Security and privacy are a key requirement for IoT applications. On the Mariota network, it would take an average of approximately 165 billion years for a single incorrect authentication to occur. All bulk data carried over satellite to ground station links are encrypted and authenticated, employing a zero trust security posture. Uh, as I said earlier, we have the ability for two-way messaging and we currently use the VHF and UF, excuse me, VHF and UHF frequency bands. So these next few slides will cover some of our partner devices and use cases that we deliver satellite connectivity for. Uh, this is Tackle smart water meters, which have paved the way for efficient water consumption data collection from remote areas of Australia. If you've ever been to Australia, which just happens to be where the Mariota HQ happens to be, uh, you'll know that more than 90% of Australia is considered remote. So the need for something like smart water metering is critical. So here, we're gonna kind of go over some of our tank monitoring partners like the AgBot device, which has helped save countless hours driving to your water tanks, troughs, fertilizer tanks, and more to check various levels that can you can now check from your phone and see your tank levels there, thus saving you that expensive window time. Groundfoss is one of the largest partner is one of our largest partners and one of the U.S.'s largest water pump manufacturers. We partner with them on a solar pump and tank module that currently attaches to a hydrostatic pressure sensor on their pumps, as well as temperature, chlorine, pH, and other sensors for tank monitoring. What you see on this slide is our fight recorder, which is designed to give the location, position, if troops are standing or if they're in the prone position as well as troop direction, so you know if they're pressing forward or retreating. There's also a built-in SOS button that a soldier can press in case of an emergency. The other device you see is called the Andromeda. This is an asset tracking device that you can slap on almost anything, but most commonly we see it on the shipping containers, farm equipment, and truck trailers, where surprisingly, I just read a stat that over a, that hundreds of thousands of these trailers go missing in the U.S. alone every year. Um, with all of these devices that you see, uh, Mariota's design services team helped integrate our module into these devices by working hand in hand with our partners to determine the right spec from IP rating, uh, sensor selection, antenna selection, and more. Okay, what you see on this slide is a, a Mariota design that we created to help companies get to market faster. This is our new FlexSense device. We've taken the various learnings from, our, from creating partner devices and translating them into an all-in-one device that covers majority of the verticals and use cases that we come across. Th this eliminates the need for many companies to design their own device, and they can use the device for almost all of their needs. It can be white labeled, and our motto is, it just works. The, the FlexSense is an IP67 rated, Bluetooth ready, 
and has five to 10 years of battery life in the field off of four AA lithium batteries. Uh, it can be used with numerous sensor interfaces like 420 milliamp, serial RS-232, RS-485, digital IO, I2C, and can have up to four sensors connected to one flex sense. The cost of this device at scale is under 200 USD and data packages start as low as 99 cents per month and making it extremely affordable and scalable. Another great feature, which we'll show you a little later during the live demo, is how easily the FlexSense connects to our device manager and automatically and seam seamlessly populates into your Toggle platform. Back to you, Dave. Thank you, Mike. So that's really powerful, right? Mike hit on some key points, right? It's very cost effective um, to use satellite. And the different verticals that he's mentioning, right? And that's just a few, right? Um, as Togo IO and Mariota continue to grow our partnership, we're seeing more and more customers adapt to satellite because um, it's very reliable. And again, it's very cost effective. I can't stress that enough. But when you think of Togo IO, as the customer success manager, obviously I speak to customers all over the world, all kinds of different verticals, all kinds of different companies with different strategies and uh, business requirements. So to me, Togo IO really goes beyond the IoT, traditional IoT visualization platform, right? It's much more than that. Um, actionable data, analytics, um, just to mention a few, and it's very customizable. When you think of Togo, think of customization, right? Because you can customize um, per your business requirements or your customers' needs any way you want, right? And integration is also important, right? So right now we have over 16,000 accounts, right? We're in over 120 countries, and we've got a great showing here in our chat of people just all over the world that are either already our customer or interested in Togo and Mariota, right? And right now we have over 500 device types. And one thing that you can do, if you were to go on our site and you say, oh, my, my device is not there, right? You can create your own connector because <clears throat> it's in GitHub, it's public, public domain, right? So you can create your own connector right to interact with Togo IO and Mariota in this case right but really you could use it in any way that you desire we think about here in this graph if you look at the different swim lanes right you have your sensors right whatever they're attached to right and then you have your connectivity with the Mariota satellite network right which is very robust and as Mike mentioned just as Togo IO very scalable right so I have customers that I've worked with for the four years that I've been here that started out with just an idea, a concept, right? And now they're flourishing, right, in their business and their selected customer base, right, using Togo IO and Mariota, right? So when you look at processing, think of Togo IO in two different ways, right? Of course, I said it's very customizable, right, which is awesome. Um, we have our own learning center that you can take uh, free of charge, by the way. We have a free account that's not a trial account. It's not 30 days, 60 days. You can have it for life um, if you want. And I have some customers that are just mom and pops and monitoring a fish tank in their front door at home. And they're just fine with the um, the free try or the free uh, uh, Togo IO application. Of course, other customers go into the other scalable models as they grow their business. But when you're looking at swim lane three, you see Togo IO at the top and run. So what does that represent? Togo IO up at the top is really where it's your developer account, right? It's where you're going to build your application, right? And I have, I would say probably 75% of our customers if not, maybe a little more, build their own application based on their requirements, right? Some customers do come to us for professional services, which that's obviously available to you. So where we build out their application. And then what I'm representing down at the bottom where you see run, right? That's your end user experience, right? So you can add your company logo, uh, your favicom, terms and condition for legality purposes, whatever you want to do, but that is where you're going to build your end user um, interaction, right? 
their interface, if you will. So when you hear Tago run, what we're really referring to there is the end user experience, right? And it, there's a lot of things you can do there. We have dictionary. Um, you can build in your own dictionary, uh, multi-language. There's security features there, email templates for notifications and alerts. And um, it just goes on and on. There's so much to, um, to Tago run and Tago IO in general. And some people get intimidated by Tago IO because it's very customizable. There's lots of things. We have so many features. There's lots of things there. So I highly recommend reaching out to myself or Tiago Lima or Alex, um, two other CSMs in Brazil to really get to know Tago and to help you. But we have a lot of great self-help. That's one thing I take pride in personally here at Tago is that we have a, all kinds of self-help to really get you, whether it's the learning center, um, demos like this to help you. We do have technical demos as well. We have a drop-in session um, every Wednesday at noon where you can just drop in and ask technical questions from our developers, right? And then, of course, um, I think I mentioned our learning center, but you can reach out to any of the CSM support. We're all just one big family here, and we really want to help our customers grow, right? And really understand the application and how versatile it is. And speaking of versatile, integrations, right? I have customers integrating with JIRA, um, which is a bug tracking system. That's one thing JIRA does. Um, you know, with SAP, CRMs, the Weather Channel, whatever it is, right? You can integrate with just about everything using our API, and there's some other options there as well. And lots of customers in the enterprise area, right? And then, of course, the developers and user interaction, as I talked about with Tago Run. So it's very versatile and very powerful of what you can do on Tago IO. Now, when you think about it, how and where our technology really helps, right? Again, I speak with customers and potential customers all over the world doing all sorts of different, very creative things with Tago. And whether that's monitoring climate changes, crop health, right, which goes hand in hand with Mariota's satellite technology, monitoring water resources, as Mike was mentioning, but it really goes beyond that, right? When I think of the benefits, right, of Tago IO and Mariota, right, um, optimization use of machinery. But let's expand on that a little bit, right? Because preventative maintenance is huge. Whether you are doing leak detection in buildings, whether you are tracking environmental items, or maybe you are just um, using sensors to track your machinery. It might be a vibration sensor. If the vibration goes above a certain threshold that you've set, then it's going to send an alert and that machine is going to turn off. And you've just prevented costly, costly repairs by catching it early. So again, when I think of Tago IO, it goes well beyond visualization. It's our reports, our analytics, uh, preventative maintenance, RTLS. I have lots of customers in RTLS. Mike touched on this with one of his asset tracking sensors that are tracking things all over the world, in the air, on the, through the sea, and then on land and uh, rail as well, on land. So again, the, the things that you can do with Tago and Mariota is really, there's no boundaries, right? I mean, you know, if you really think about it, right? Um, soil health tracking, weather condition monitor. Again, it goes so above and beyond. And we do have people that are using uh, Tago IO and Mariota for disease detection. Um, for their uh, animals in most cases, right? So water and energy resource utilization. What you're looking at here on the right, by the way, is a template that we have, right? So we have many templates. Again, I'm very big on self-help, as I said. Um, we have many templates. Maybe you don't wanna build out an entire uh, dashboard we have so many templates, you could just go grab a template and download it to your developer Tago IO account. And then once it's in your profile, you can build it out any way you see fit, right? Um, you own it at that point is the point I'm making, 
You can do whatever you want to change the widgets, change the colors. We have so many uh, uh, optimization uh, benefits that you can do with Toggle IO. And really it's greater efficiency through better visibility, right? And what, is, what does that mean, right? Greater efficiency, what does that mean? Well, again, as I said, preventative maintenance, um, tracking your crops. I have a customer um, that uses Mariota and they have a huge sod farm here in the U.S., right? And they, they've integrated with the weather channel. And if it's 80% chance of rain, they don't turn on the, their sprinkler systems for their, um, for their farm, right? For their um, sod farm grass, they're growing, growing grass. And so they save a lot of money on um, water cost, as well as keeping their crops, their sod, um, healthy. And really, it's an enhanced sustainability. That is an example of that, of enhanced sustainability, right? And the big thing that all of us should be, you know, paying attention to is environmental footprint, right? And you can really minimize that in so many different ways. I have a ton of examples. I won't go through them all here, but think about that, right? Your environmental footprint of what, what can you do there, right? So it's really important when you're thinking of Tago IO and Mariota, don't be stuck on just visualization. I've said it over and over and I'll continue to say it, it goes well beyond visualization. You could have your own reports with your own company logo, nice PDF, you know, that will go out to your stakeholders, let's say. That's heavily used by the way, over the customer base. You think of features and customizations, right? So data visualization, again, I said it goes beyond visualization, but there's so much you can do. So what you're looking at here, whether it's energy monitoring, whether you're doing asset tracking, and the screen on the far right is really cool, by the way. It's indoor and outdoor tracking, right? So you can track things. I use this on my, at my home, quite honestly, on my farm where I am monitoring things that are in the barn, you know, my tractor and things like that. But also I want to monitor things outside. So when something leaves the barn or the warehouse or whatever it is, your indoor facility, it automatically tracks it outdoors as well. And the visualization is just amazing, right? And then I generate reports and things like that. So again, very cool stuff that you can do um, here with Tago IO. And custom reports that I mentioned, I mentioned a little bit of it. It doesn't have to be a PDF. It could be a um, CSV report. You can have it emailed to your end users, as I said, your company logo. It's very customizable, right? And there's multiple settings that you can do. Um, I see some really cool reports where it's like, I wish I would have thought of that. <laughs> it's from some of our customers. So very good stuff um, from that aspect. And then if you think of custom analytics, right? You could add analytics to help your end users understand, you know, what does the data mean, right? Because again, I work with a lot of companies and the CEO doesn't really, he's not gonna go look at the dashboard, right? He wants to know what is the data telling us, right? And you can do that with Tago IO, again, beyond visualization. Our analytics are very advanced, right? And maybe you want to integrate with your own analytic. Maybe you're already using some company for just integrate Tago IO with it, right? Uh, very easy to do, right? You can keep your data up to nine years. Um, we have uh, widgets, right? Over 36, but you can also build your own. We just did a very nice tutorial on building your own custom widget right? So maybe you're on our site and it's like, ah, these widgets, I really want something, you know, more along my lines of what I need, right? So from there, just build your own custom widget, right? I think that's very unique, by the way, um, from uh, in our industry to where we give you that flexibility, right? So again, the possibilities are endless of what you can do on Togo.io. Really, I'm, I'm not just saying it's, I've seen some very cool stuff that people are doing. And when you think of, this is also a cool thing. So again, think Togo Run, right? End user experience, right? You've built out your Togo Run, you have your cool dashboard. And now you can just download the Togo uh, Run app for free, right? And you would just type in the URL. If you look at the image on the left, you could type in your URL, 
Again, have your own logo, have a cool video in the background when people go to your um, go to your application. And then on the far right, what you're seeing there is, you know, a map. Right. And what's really cool, I see people do this all the time and I encourage people to do it. what you're seeing on those pins. Right. Let's just think of asset tracking. Right. Well, you see the pins moving. Yeah, that's cool. Well, if you hover over the pin or you highlight the pin, you'd have a little pop up that'll give you information on that, whatever that asset is. Right. And it doesn't have to be, you know, asset tracking. But the point here is you can use these pins in so many different ways. I have customers that actually use pins um, in their restaurant in the map, right? They can see the inside of their restaurant. And when something gets, uh, let's say a refrigerator is out of temp, whether that's low or high, that pin will change a color, right? And of course they get the notifications, but let's just say, <clears throat> you know, you need a second layer, right? Again, preventative maintenance, preventative maintenance is huge, right? So that pin will change colors and you could easily go there and just click on that and you could see what is going on, going on with that particular uh, device and machine that you're tracking or whatever it is, right? There's just a lot of different things that you can do there. So it's really cool. Now, well, I'm going to go into a live demo, but before I do that, um, I do have a quick thing for everybody um, we do have some more webinars coming up, so keep an eye out for our webinars. I would highly recommend that you sign up to our newsletter, follow us on LinkedIn, um, follow Mariota as well. I actually receive their newsletter all the time. Very cool happenings going on there. I know some stuff they're working on that I can't really tell you right now, but uh, there's some cool stuff happening there. And we're working on some cool stuff as well. So let me share my screen real quick. Let me grab this real quick. And Mike's going to do a live demo as well, right? So when you think about how to integrate Toggle.io with Mariota, right, with their satellite connectivity, it's super easy, right? And Mike's going to show you this as well. But I wanted to go through this just very quickly and show you how easy this is. Basically, all I did is I went to our website and I clicked on uh, help Center, which I can show you, and then uh, Network Integration. Went down to Mariota, and all you need to do is really create an authorization code, right? So if you create an authorization code, you would do that right here. You would generate it. You'd give it a name, give it a parameter if you want to, and then you would generate it. And then from there, you would copy this authorization code, and that would would go right here. So when you are configuring on the Mariota Device Manager portal, it's just a one-time handshake with this authorization code between the Mariota portal and Toggle.io. And then you never have to do that again. You could just start adding your devices um, onto, onto the Mariota portal and Toggle.io will automatically recognize them because you've already taken care of that handshake, that one-time handshake. So I'm not kidding you, like three clicks and you're done. Um, it's very easy to do. And hence, that's why this tutorial is so small, because <laughs> it's so easy to do, right? One quick thing before I let everybody go um, to the rest of the live demo. If I go to the website, right, here under resources, our ebooks really good. We just added some nice new ebooks out there. Our learning center that I mentioned, you can learn Toggle IO, right? Again, free. All this is free. Our videos and our dashboard templates is what I want to show you. I spoke about this earlier in the webinar, but these are so popular, I can't begin to tell you. So here are our um, templates. And you would just simply click on these whatever one suits you suits your needs. And you would say, get template, and it'll ask you a few questions. And then the template is in your, uh, is in your Toggle IO developer application. And then you can do with it with what you want, right? So really cool um, with that. Let me stop screen share real quick. And I believe Mike, the floor is yours. I do right. video and stuff, so thank you. All right. Appreciate uh, appreciate that, Dave. It's, uh, you know, 
pretty amazing to see how how we've integrated our systems and you know given our customers such an easy way to uh kind of visualize what they're getting in the data so really appreciate you doing this um so what what we have here guys this is called our flex assist this is uh something you would download from the app store um and what you would do is you'd get this you would log in through your device manager through flex assist um sorry the video is a little slow once you have your uh your flex sense it'll walk you through on how to connect it uh and register your device so you'll go through you'll see if you have different devices on here it's unregistered you'll go through and register it it's pretty simple pretty self-explanatory it'll go through device registration you'll press the button on the flex sense uh start to register keep showing it there it is now it'll show that it's registered once it shows it's registered, it'll kind of go into some of the device details. Once you've got your device details, everything looks like it makes sense. You're then going to go into your device uh, manager here on give me a quick second on your on your internet here. You'll go to your device manager and you'll log into your device manager and you'll see how seamlessly Toggle is already Toggle Iowa is already in with the Flex Sense. Uh, we found this to be such a critical part of, you know, what you need to do that we have made this seamless where it's automatically going to be into your thing. So what we'll do is we'll search for this device. Here are all your devices inside of Device Manager that you can take a look at. Look at the visualization platform. We'll search for the device we just added. Here it is. We'll come through. You'll see it'll have different how many daily messages, when your first message was, your last message, when you registered. And it's automatically going to have a Toggle I.O. dashboard already pre-registered, ready to go. You're gonna go ahead and click on that. And as David said, all of this is completely customizable. Whatever information you want in there can all come up, but here's how we kind of have it, where we have our temperature, our latency, um, latitude, longitude, so you know where it's at. And all of this data is inside of the platform, right here, device location. And you can come through, customize this as much as you want to, uh, to fit your needs and what you're tracking. But the goal of this was to just make this completely seamless and easy, uh, just like David showed you on his, uh, on his steps. Um, and that's, that's really the platform there. I'll send it back over to you, David. We can uh, kind of go over some questions or whatever you think makes sense next. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I just get a kick out of that, Mike. <laughs> Uh, just, I really do. I get a cool. kick out of that, how easy that is just to add your device, basically do the handshake with Togo IO, add your device, and then create a dashboard right there on the fly in just a couple clicks. It's very unique, awesome. Uh, I'm so glad to be working with Mariota from that aspect. Um, so I think we have one question. Let me get to that real quick. Um, Antonio's asking about the basically tracking drifting systems in the sea surface, acquiring different data in 20 minute intervals, and also the position accuracy. Well, from the Togo IO standpoint, and I, by the way, I do have customers that actually, actually monitor um, whether that's the ocean surface temperature. Um, I do have a customer where they actually manufacture buoys with sensors and they're looking at currents, temperature, uh, wave height, <clears throat> wind speed, all kinds of different things, right? And as far as the accuracy, it really depends on your sensor, right? I can say with high, high confidence that the accuracy and positioning, whether that's in the, on the sea, because um, I have several cargo ship companies that use Togo IO, the accuracy is in real time, right? Um, I don't have a data write-up on that, um, but I can just tell you that we have flourished in these areas, whether it's asset tracking across the world, right? Again, we have many customers doing that. The accuracy is impeccable, right? So that is really important. Obviously, you need to have accuracy on your asset tracking. So, Antonio, <clears throat> to answer your question, the accuracy is phenomenal. Um, oh, depending on your device and the interval that your device is uplinking data, Right. Obviously, that's dependent on. It. But as far as Togo I.O., Togo is just sitting there listening. Right. Listening, listening, listening. And as soon as that device pings, it's displayed on Togo I.O. 
immediately. So, Mike, I believe there's a question for you here. Yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, hey, William, I see your message. Are all the Mariota enabled devices supported by all 30 satellites? What is the stated latency between reads? So, yes, they're all supported by all the satellites. We do a polar rotation. So as, as they come through, we, we pick up. Um, we just launched a couple of more satellites just recently, a couple of weeks ago, and we're updating our latencies to make sure. My team is telling me they believe they're going to be two to four hours uh, latency, but I, I, I struggle to uh, say that until I see it. I'm one of those people, I'll believe it when I see it. I, tell, I typically tell our customers it's about six to eight hours uh, reliably to uh for your latency so um that is improving we have a roadmap to grow that more ground stations um more satellites uh, more partnerships to really get that latency down our goal over the next couple of years is to be in that 15 minute range uh, and we have some work to do to get there um let's see i see martin can you discuss the satellites lifetimes and future plans for the constellation so i think i hit on that a little bit uh the plan is to definitely uh add add satellites to bring down our latency add ground stations to to bring down our latency and kind of get there um as satellites you know they're the ones that we're putting up that our company owned are the size of a microwave and kind of <laughs> brought up there and typically you know from a life they're as they're going out, we're putting up more than are going down, I should say. So uh, constant improvements to our satellite network. Um, can you use it, Armando, can you use it to monitor boats? Uh, really, it would all depend on what you're monitoring, what the sensors are, and the latency that you would need, how often you need those readings. But uh, we do have asset tracking, like I said, that monitors shipping containers on boats and things like that. But uh, if you're looking for... Uh, real-time data, uh, Mariota isn't there at the moment, and I'm not sure that's ever going to be in our our plans. I think we're happy sitting in that low cost, you know, hey, we're a couple bucks a month, uh, but you're only going to be able to see your data every, you know, uh, 15 minutes, two hours, things like that, and once we get there. And then real quick, before we move on to the next question, when the for Armando's question, monitoring boats, uh, yes, you can absolutely do that, right? And when you think of satellite connectivity, right, it's really important, right? Obviously, it's a remote area if it's boats out on the ocean and things like that. Togo works very well in that arena, as well as Mariota. But it just matters, as Mike was hitting on, of what, how often do you need that data? I will say, from personal experience, from asset tracking in general, right, from sea to land and air, um, people are getting readings maybe three or four times a day. Um, some people need it in real time, right? And sure, that makes sense. But most customers don't need to know where there's, you know, where it is every second, right? They want to know what the key points are, the dwell time, how long has it been sitting, um, where did where did it start at, what's its destination, right? And where did it stop along the way? So that's how asset tracking in most cases are used, but not in all cases, right? And I believe Martin has a question. Um, if your satellites are in polar orbit, Mike. They are. Yes, they are in polar orbit. That's kind of how we operate and, and where we go from there. Um, I, I didn't hit on it last time for you, Martin, but um, you know, we just updated our network. So now you'll be able to kind of push downloads into uh, your device because our devices in a flex sense go so long into the field you know, we don't want you to have to actually go to the device anymore to make any updates. We can actually do that, you know, with a by pushing out some information uh, to the device and it will auto update. So as we are adding satellites, you don't have to do anything to the device. Uh, as more satellites come through polar orbit, it will automatically update and give you that latency as we're adding satellites. Great. Uh, near equator areas, the performance... And I think that, I think you kind of hit on that, um, honestly, right? It just depends, it, right, it, Mike? It really I mean, does. It's it, it's one of those, you know, where I would have to look at our coverage map, Antonio, and see. Okay, let me let me see where we're at here. Let's see how often the the satellites go across. Um, let's do some testing. You know, let's get you a dev kit or a FlexSense dev kit out there. Put it where you go and kind of see where the latencies are. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, typically, I would I, I I personally tell most people the six to eight hour range uh, where we are getting it down. But again, we just released a new network uh, where it's, we're already seeing latencies drop dramatically. Um, but I don't want to give you the wrong answer on this. So let me look into that, Antonio, and uh, I can get back to you on where we think we're at, uh, you know, near the equator areas. Yep, I'll be able to provide uh, the attendee list to you as well. And if you think about it, um, when you, oh, Martin, you're welcome. I'm glad that you're asking questions. I love all the interaction, by the way. Um, <clears throat> uh, it's great stuff. So so one thing Mike hit, hit on is if you want to learn more, right, you can reach out to myself, david.hall at tago.io. You can reach out to Mike, right? Absolutely. Yep. And, um, and, you know, if you need Mike's information, just shoot me an email again, david.hall, H-A-L-L at tago.io. You can go to our site and ask for a demo, uh, things like that. I can get you connected with Mike and his team because he has a whole team uh, underneath him as well. Right. So really cool stuff um, that we have there. Um, this partnership has been amazing. Uh I can tell you that in all honesty, the partnership has just been amazing. So, Mike, I really appreciate your time today. I appreciate everybody joining. Please follow Mariota on LinkedIn and other social platforms. Follow, sign up for their newsletter. Sign up for the Tago IO newsletter so you understand what's coming out and the things that we have and the exciting new features that both companies are working on, as well as general information, right? So I highly recommend that. Um, I really appreciate everybody's time. Mike, awesome webinar. I'll see you at the next event, buddy. Looking forward to it. Appreciate it, everybody. Right. And thanks, Hugo, right. for the updates. I appreciate you uh, hearing more about the network than maybe I have. So I really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone.